Suara Inspirasi, where every voice tells a story, and every story will inspire you. Okay, we are back on our second segment. Um, all right, I've got uh, something interesting while I during the break. Okay, let's talk about your product duration, right? And your customer persona and also your supply chain. Let me just stop. There is three things. How did you really plan and 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 made SOPs for all this? And uh, were there trial and error uh, times and were there failures? And and what did you learn from building this thing? And till you till today where you have this uh, same day delivery from from where you started and and the services you offer today mm, yeah so we've always wanted to uh give our customer the best experience the nicest flower curation and whatnot right but at the same time you also have to think about like scalability right so we have to look into not just uh the design element of it but we also have to look into the sources and the availability of all the raw materials right so we 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 actually at, at some point of time we also stuck uh stuck where we ask ourselves, are we an uh, artist or are we uh, an entrepreneur, correct, right? Correct. Because uh, That's artists, a fine balance in yeah. your business. Yeah, exactly, right? So artists will try to, you know, uh, always come up with like new products, like, new innovation all the time, right? Um, but um, but essentially the business has to be scalable, right? So we, we also uh, put up a, a process, you know, before, uh, whenever we have a new product innovation, we look into the availability of uh, the raw materials and whether uh, this uh, this material or this arrangement can be taught uh, to the team so that they can scale. Because today we are not just in Klang Valley, we are also in Penang and uh, Johor Bahru as well as Singapore, right? So the product that we create and that can be curated from uh, the Klang Valley in the Klang Valley has to be able to be curated in other states and other cities as well. And what went through that thought, I mean, to make sure that, you know, quality when you, because these are all websites that you see the same design and you expect people to receive what they they plan. And, you know, were, were there a lot of trainings and what were the challenges you went through this? Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> we, when we were smaller that time, you know, product launches actually was way easier, right? Because you just need to translate uh, what, what you have to to the person sitting next to you okay. right but these days you know we really have to come up with like training decks sops you know uh, <laughs> all the process in place you know make sure that you know what the product team uh launch okay. uh, is being translated into let's say customer service team as okay. well because they need to know what is the product feature right? right and it also needs to be translated into the logistics team so that they know the sensitivity of this perishable item and so that they can um, they can give the right guidance to the rider to deliver the product right okay. as well as to the production team so that they can know the step by step to assemble the product correctly so that it is not loose and it is intact and beautiful uh, throughout the cost of delivery okay and during this period did you um have any experiences on problems delays and some in a way screw up and any of these things you know could you just share how do you manage that uh, if, it, if if there was i'm sure there was but you know how did you overcome and how did you prevent it from happening again yeah. So you would, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I will jump in on this because um, it's always a, a, a learning uh, as we go along. Right. Um, at the end of the day, we what's important to us is that uh, how can we like fulfill our mission, creating moments of happiness and giving customers a great experience. That is at the core of our value. <laughs> Actually, in uh, in our our value uh, system, our first uh, and the most important value is customer first. So um, if if we fail uh, or you know, have any mishaps, then it's something that we need to reflect on ourselves as a team. Uh, we have, we do these kind of check-ins on a weekly basis today. Uh, we look through uh, our processes uh, we look through inefficiencies. We even read reviews and we try to, uh, and also get, uh, read through all those customer feedback from our, our, uh, customer service channels and, and try to understand, uh, what is, uh, what are the flaws within our operation and how can we tackle that? So the element, one of the key elements, logistics, as you mentioned, yeah. delivery, uh, and if you're doing on-demand delivery, 
logistics is a, a very important aspect to ensure uh, that customers, uh, when they buy and they want it on a particular time, we can actually fulfill it. So the, the capabilities of uh, logistics goes beyond not just uh, someone picking up the item and deliver, but it goes a lot into the planning uh, part of it. Correct. And when we say planning, it connects all the way to availability of the product when it's uh, completed, like it's being curated, and also the raw materials that are available. Uh, and also it has to be fresh. Uh, so so you can see uh, just by deli- delivering the product on time, you need to ensure the curation is uh, done already. You need to ensure the materials are available. So a lot of planning processes, a lot of... Um, you know, data crunching to ensure we buy the right mix of raw material to, you know, uh, so all these things has to be in place in order to make sure that, you know, we get the great customer experience. And, you know, uh, regarding the fulfillment and all that, you know, you, your stocks has got to be uh, right, uh, almost almost there with fulfillment orders and what if people order that and how do you manage that, you know, shortage and or extras in, uh, in, in this kind of situations? That's why I mentioned that the planning side is important. Okay. Uh, we try to balance between uh, just in case and just in time, right? We have to ensure that we, we keep the right mix of all our our materials. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we cannot predict accurately like 100%. So there will be waste stages. There will be uh, the things that actually we, we have to throw away. Uh, but we try to come up with innovative ideas on what can we do with some of these, uh, these, these uh, waste stages as well. Okay. So... Uh, I think I think uh, uh one of the things that we actually work on is actually uh, products that we can curate uh, with dried flowers. But not all flowers can be dried, so only those that is uh that look good up, uh, after drying uh, can be used as uh another product line. So we actually created a dried flower product line. Okay. Uh, we also are working on composing some of our waste uh into uh some compost. And we work with uh, uh, universities to actually, uh, you know, package these compost that they can actually uh, use on, uh, you know, m- maybe, uh, you know, like a, as a fertilizer or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So we are experimenting on some ways to be sustainable with our waste. I think it's interesting because if you look at what you were at the beginning to what you're thinking, now it's a massive operation. How many people you have in your team now? I think we, we have, have about, uh, we have more than 110 wow, people. More yeah. than 110 people. Yeah. Yeah. It was just you and Gideon doing it for eight months, <laughs> part-time and one full-time. <laughs> and 30,000 to start off with. And 30,000 to start off with, right? So I think let's shed some light in terms of how you went from two people working from home before working from home was the norm. <laughs> <laughs> you now having your own factory slash warehouse, you now have physical outlets, you know, you've evolved. So run us through how you went from starting that business 30K and then potentially, you know, raising your first round of funding and then scaling the business to then having, I would assume, millions of customers are happy today, right? So uh, I mentioned earlier that after the Stanford program, right, we came back, uh, Magic actually did uh, the first accelerator program and we were part of that program as well. And uh, that time was complete, still complete bootstrap. It was just me, Penny, two person working from home. Um, but at the end of that program, we had an opportunity to go on a demo day. So we pitched our idea during the demo day of that accelerated program, okay. which um, kind of like... Uh, this was magic, right? This was magic, first accelerated program. Back, right. This was back in 2015. So after that demo day pitching, uh, we had some interest in... Uh, the, the, the demo day actually invited a lot of investors. So we had some interest in some investors looking at the at the business. And uh, uh, we are really thankful that uh, we managed to raise our first round of uh, seed funding uh, with a few angels and uh, 500 startups. That time was, uh, they were really uh, very supportive of the idea. Um, and uh, they actually put in a, a small seed fund for us to uh, kickstart. The, the business and so with that it helped us to uh, sort of like we actually moved out of our little apartment o- operation into another house actually we rented a, a, a landed small house but before the house actually we uh, we went to our mother's place uh, or we bootstrap all over the place right because we needed some space <laughs> yeah. so we need to put refrigerator so and our apartment was too small to put yeah. a big refrigerator we needed a landed house so we 
moved to Amata's place for a Fine while. Fine enough, you know, we messed up a whole place. I, I don't know how she'd take us. Like, <laughs> yeah. But after the funding, we actually moved to a small, land, a, a, a kind of a, a landed house, double-story landed house. We hired about uh, six people, six to ten yeah. people like that, yeah. uh, all operational. And we had um, got space and we've got, you know, more people to focus on a few like operations and social media and things like that. And that actually uh, uh, helped us to go to market uh, a bit more efficiently, right? It was, there was still very much, uh, um, I would say, uh, um, I would say as low cost marketing as we can, right? Leveraging on social media, uh, very little on uh, using ad spend or anything like that. It's, it's as, as uh, effective as possible uh, marketing as we can find digitally. Um, and, and so, so that kind of like took us to another, another level. And you, at the point of funding, prior to you being bootstrapped, how many customers did you see in that first year of funding? Like, did you grow like 100%? What was your revenue at the time? Yeah, we had, uh, honestly, I can't remember the number of customers, but uh, what what we experienced was, um, actually, we doubled our growth, our revenue. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, f- the first year we doubled, but I believe the second year, we actually grew Almost, almost, uh, one thousand percent, right? Wow. Like we, we almost wow. 10x. So it's like ten, ten x, la. Almost ten x, yes. Wow. Almost ten x. Uh, the the second year, um, and then we actually go to uh the market to in uh raise a second round of uh still a, like a seed funding, like a pre A kind of funding at that time. So we went into the market to uh raise another round, um, because we we had that high growth. But what happened was, uh, at that time we were still uh financially not as efficient. So that we were still burning, actually, we were still uh, at a loss, and uh, we expanded the operation. So more people, we expanded marketing, we were innovating, iterating product. So we needed some uh, funding to continue that momentum. So what we did was we went uh, to try to raise a, another round of funding, uh, and eventually we uh, closed the second round of funding uh, in. Uh, 2017, I believe it was. And it was with a Japanese investor, right? Yes, it was. How did, how did you find that Japanese investor? Oh, that was also very interesting because <laughs> um, I believe it was already, I think, um, Magic's, you see, Magic has been in the early days of our Again, our, our journey. So we, we, we're going to tag Stanford, we're going to tag Magic, right? Magic so, no longer exists. Yeah, right? it doesn't matter, but yeah, I mean, but it's a area, but sayang, but you, end of the day, we can say the impact, right? Go ahead, sorry. Very successful. Yeah, 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 really, we are super thankful for, for you know, what Magic has done. Uh, it was the third cohort, I believe, the accelerator program. And they invited the founder CEO of that fund, Ripra. Uh, he has an amazing story as well. I won't go into that, but he was a keynote speaker. And I needed to uh, look uh, for investors at the time. So I was pitching from one investor to another. And uh, it was it has been six months and I had tremendous rejection. Uh, most, most investors actually rejected. Uh, even though we had that 10x growth, I thought that, so that's interesting. I, that's my, yeah. my one of my learning, right? I thought 10x growth with traction, you can raise fund anytime. And I thought that was very sexy, but it wasn't because uh, there were a lot of other areas in the business that we haven't got it figured out yet. Okay. And it wasn't uh, very appealing to a lot of uh, uh, VCs and investors at the time. So I find it so difficult. I think we met more than 100, I don't know, 150 people or what, but I, I had so many rejections. And I met this uh, Japanese uh, uh, investor, Ray Re- Pra, and I shared with him the vision. And um, and he was looking at it uh, at, in a very different lens. Um, and he actually buy into the long-term uh, uh, vision, yes, of what we are trying to do, right? Trying to revolutionize the industry, trying to enable the industry with technology and processes and whatnot. So um, then he put in a, another round of fund, uh, which is also a, 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 a most size of a seed round, I would say, like a second seed. Uh, but that actually, uh, actually, there was also, we are almost at the tipping point where we, we almost completely run out of cash and wow. uh, we completely, uh, almost, we, I think we were four months away uh, of uh, completely shutting down. Three months. Uh, three or four months. And when the money the came. the runway. Eh? Yeah, yeah. I know runway. When the money came, we had only one month runway and that's it, right? Uh, it was really stressful moments for both Penny and I because we had a team to take care of. Yeah, how big was the team at that point in time? I think, think about, it was about less than 10, I yeah, think. About 10 yeah. at most. Okay. Yeah, yeah but we, we were very stressed out already because we ourselves are not really taking salaries, but we, we need to pay salaries. We, we took a bit. I, I believe at that time, probably we, are, we, we take some, a, a bit to get by, uh, but, but we had to take care of so many people and we only had like four months 
runway and, and it was very stressful. And we really thank God for, for, for Repra, you know, they really came in at the right time and they supported us. Yeah. And this was your final round of funding. You never raised any more. 2017 was our final round. And uh, actually, so I mentioned that when we had the 10x growth, I thought that you know, raising money was, was easy because we had traction and all and whatnot. But after the 2017, uh, you know, uh, ordeal that, that I, I went through, I tell myself, uh, we are going to look into the business and really fix our fundamentals in terms of financial fundamentals, unit yeah. economics, profitability. We, we decided to build a profitable business and at the same time, high growth business. So, uh, at that time, I think we, it was also a bit of a challenge because the belief was you choose to grow high growth, yep. hyper growth, like yep. bleed scaling, or you choose yeah. profitability. To go back and go home. <laughs> yeah. So you don't do both, right? It's very difficult to do both. You can't do both. You have to choose one. And so, and, and, uh, we decided, no, we're going to attempt to do both. We're going to go high growth plus profits. So how you do that, right? But the first thing to do is really look into the unique economics of the the business itself, the product itself, the from customer acquisition costs all the way to the uh, cost of the goods and um, the the pricing of the product, and you know a, a lot of financial uh, 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 like tuning the financial part of our business was was key, and also bookkeeping. We are very diligent and very strict on bookkeeping, so we have to ensure everything is really uh, done properly. And, and that was like a discipline that we uh, adopted since since that that time when we almost uh, got like a run out of runway, right? We really got so scared already. So from then on, we we said, okay, never mind, uh, forget fundraising. Just we thought that the best way to fundraise is through creating great products for our customers. And if our customers love us, they will be our funders. They will be supporting us and you know buying our products. And and we should use the funds to really create best great customer experience. So it's a flywheel, right? So that's what we're trying to achieve. And that has been like that since 2017 until today. Until you came to the point that you are profitable since, which is amazing, and, and then bought back shares in your company, right? Yeah, I think that um, <laughs> um, we, we believe that company, we have seen, this is the ninth year. So we have seen the company grew from, uh, and evolve from one phase to another, like a child growing up kind of thing, right? Like from a baby exactly, all the way exactly. to that's becoming that, independent. Right. So, so we couldn't be where we are today. I must say this. We really couldn't be where we are today without the support, uh, first from our customers, but secondly, also from our investors, right? But they were like, we were really, uh, you know, like they, they say, niawa, niawa, ikan really, you know, almost <laughs> gone really without the investors coming in to help us. We, we will not be where we are today. So I'm eternally grateful for, you know, what they have done and supported us, not just through the, the funding, but through knowledge, through doors that they open, through the expertise that they've given to us. It helped us. And when we come to this stage where uh, last year, uh, we believe that the organization has uh, grown to an extent that uh, we would need different kind of partners and, uh, you know, uh, business partners uh, to take the company to the next level. So uh, we decided to actually uh, regroup again uh, and take control of our uh, the ownership of the company. So both me and Penny actually decided to uh, buy back the company and take full control of the company. And then from here, uh, we can actually dictate the pace of the company uh, and also the direction of where we want to go strategically. And you're doing this because you decided to fix the business, became profitable, never looked back, went from dying, which I'll pass to Sundar to us, <laughs> potentially dying again in the pandemic, right? Yes. <laughs> so recovery <laughs> pandemic made, you, I mean, you turned the business around more than once here yeah. and had enough cash flow to be able to pay back your investors, which is something that I think everybody here should know, right? When people invest money, they want money back, guys. Correct. It's not free money. Correct. Correct. So I'll, I'll hand it over to Sundar to get on the pandemic when bandwagon, really. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's really quite brilliant to see these ups and downs and end of the day, your growth and uh, the decision making. And uh, like you were saying, you know, I always tell a lot of people that, you know, a company is, is a living thing. So, you know, how you want to grow a baby to the adulthood, right? So, um, yeah, my, the next thing is, you know, you talk about the tough times and you were saying nyawa nyawa ikan and stuff like that right the toughest decisions that you made especially i think in 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 two different areas right toughest business decision during the pandemic and also uh during the e-commerce boom i think uh, there were quite a number of really really hard decisions you got to make you know and you know, could you just elaborate on those things and you know and why and how 
and the reason behind it and also the results from the decision you made, you know, whether it's good or bad, right? So maybe you could, uh, let's, let's start with the pandemic. So I think pandemic is definitely one of the toughest uh, or or defining moment actually as an entrepreneur. Uh, oh, that was, <laughs> yeah. was the defining moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So um so when the pandemic first uh when when the lockdown first uh, first announced right so we basically had no idea of uh, how to maneuver and no idea what to do right and I remember it was uh, March 18. Right, was the uh, announcement lockdown. of lockdown. Yeah, right. but right. we already got our supplies in. Yeah, two days ago. Right. Mm. So what are we gonna do with all the fresh flower supplies? Right. We're gonna discard all of them. Right. And that's gonna impart like a huge losses. Right. Yeah. So we we try um our best, you know, to you know um dry out all the products that can be reusable. Okay. Right. But most of the time, we, uh, mo- most of them, we have to di- discard them anyway. Yeah. So this is uh, between like, you know, managing um, losses as well. Uh, right. And normally during these kind of things, during uh, the product and the, to dry out the product, what's the per- percentage? Like let's say you're 100%, what are the percentage of flowers that you could really dry? 10%, 20%? Yeah. So maybe like 20% at, at most wow. uh, because not all of them, it's, it's in the right uh, condition to be dried out. And uh, bear in mind that, you know, uh, there will be a hard lockdown in two days' time, right? So we have to call up uh, customers, you know, to explain to them, set expectations, to tell them that, hey, uh, they have already bought from us, but we won't be able to fulfill. You know, some we have to do like full refunds. Some we have to, you know, uh, give them credit so that they can come back uh, and, and buy from us uh, at another time, right? So, and and I think that, this part is still manageable, but what was really scary at that point of time is that we, we had a colleague, right, who, uh, who, who, who was infected, right, with, uh, with, with COVID, right? And, and he actually went to, uh, ICU and wow. none of us know what to do, right? And he basically in, in the office, uh, we had a small office back then, right? So we were sitting really close next to one another and that was really mentally um, challenging uh, for both Gideon and I because we don't know whether are we the infected ones or not right but yet at the same time we still have to go into the office and tell people what to do and manage things right and it was the most scariest point of time is uh, where um, where uh, this um, this teammate of our, ours actually passed away right so yeah, yeah. So it was really tough for us because we have to manage, uh, not just, uh, um, not just the business and also the wow. emotion and the, and the well-being of who is still around, right? And actually at that point of time, I'm also trying to manage my, my own mental state, right? So. Yeah, so that was a Ooh. that was a, a a very tough period for us to uh, maneuver. Yeah. Wow, I mean, yeah, I, I'm just looking back. It's really tough, right? Emotions and business and wow. Okay, um, and what about during the e-commerce boom? Were there any tough decisions oh, made right. during this time? Yeah, I mean, the, when the pandemic, like what Penny said, when the pandemic first hit, we had to find our way. Because I'm sure not just us, but the whole, everyone in the world, right, um, who, ha- who runs a business need to rethink their operation and how to operate from a completely lockdown condition. But yes, um, after, uh, after a while, um, we realized that, uh, people were stuck at home and the only way that they can really buy goods is through online. And that's where the e-commerce boom actually, uh, came up. Right. But uh, we realized that what we did in the past, so we, we invested after we raised that money from the Japanese VC, we, took a lot of that uh, resource to develop process and technology. That's when we start developing our proprietary uh, technology to, uh, you know, uh, like I mentioned, ease away certain bottlenecks of our operation. Yes. That that technology and that process actually helped us a lot during the pandemic. Things like uh, contactless delivery, you know, uh, uh, of course it's e-commerce, so you buy online. Um, and um, uh, so, 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 these things actually helped us to uh, continue our operation 
during uh, that time of the lockdown. And so yeah. it looks like we were ready uh, to continue to operate. And e-commerce was actually an essential service at the time. Uh, we also launched, we also decided to launch uh, products beyond flowers. Why and didn't our... Why- oh, that's when you started? Uh-huh. No, yeah. but we started that before the pandemic. We yeah. never knew the pandemic or, or yes. what is coming. Yeah. So we just wanted to, because we see, okay, seasons like uh, birthdays and, and anniversary and whatnot, there are other adjacent products that go with flowers, for example, like cakes right. and desserts and whatnot. Yeah. So we introduced this product offering uh, just a few months before the lockdown, like December, the year before, the end of the year, okay. uh, the okay. year before. And so we had that whole category of food as well, uh, yeah. ice cream and, and dessert and cakes. And then when, when lockdown happened, actually these categories yeah. become essential. My so God. it also yeah, helped yeah. us to... It so was remember, really a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So remember just now I mentioned that you know, we only have a few days to react, right? To, to the lockdown. So two days before the lockdown, we were actually planning for uh, uh, assets shooting or crea- uh, creative shootings, you know, for our um, packages with okay. the cakes and food and whatnot, right? So I remember very well the team was like, asking me that, hey, do we still continue this thing or not? Because we're going to lock down anyway. You're not going to sell this thing. Okay. Uh, we, we cannot operate at all, right? But I I, I made a decision and uh, and told the team that, uh, no, we will proceed with the assets shooting because to be honest, I had no idea what would happen, but I know I had to be ready. Okay. So I said, never mind, we just shoot first. And true enough, you know, uh, throughout the the uh, lockdown period, the only thing that we can deliver is actually the cakes and the food, and fruits as well. So yeah. was that a gut feeling that that time making that 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 particular decision, you know, to proceed, or you think that you know it was more of a calculated decision? Yeah. So like what Gideon mentioned earlier on, we memang had the plan to launch the uh, packages, the mm-hmm. food uh, food packages, right? It's just that at that point of time that I think uh it was. It was like, whether do we proceed or not? Because we don't know what to do. But I think that, like you say, if I can put it, it was, uh, I would say, uh, 50% calculated and 50% gut feeling as well. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You cannot so calculate like, everything. A blend, yeah. a blend, a blend. <laughs> yeah, to proceed it anyway, right? Right. And that's where we, uh, when, when, and that's where actually the platform was ready, you know, for e-commerce boom and for us to, you know, uh, fulfill all this uh, demand from the market for, for food deliveries. I see, I see. And how is it going on with that particular segment now, today? Mm. So what happened was with that boom, actually in that period, so we went crashing down and then we come up again and we in that two years, we ultimately grow about 500%. Right. So when we grow, when massive growth like that happened, operationally, you can imagine it's very difficult to manage from people. Again, we mentioned people, process and platform. Correct. We right. have to rethink, reinvent ourselves. Like people need to be in place again. Organization need to restructure again. New departments need to be formed again. Uh, technology need to be uh, redesigned. Uh, the whole framework has to rethink again because process is different already, Correct. right? Correct. Like uh, at scale, then you have to rethink the process. You can't do things so yeah. uh, single or manually. So it was really challenging and we are we're doing, we're doing all this in the middle of a lockdown. And, you know, uh, we had like, uh, that time had the maximum capacity workforce at the premise. So you, you have to abide by certain rules and, yeah. you know, social distancing and all these things. Yeah. So it was very, very difficult. And we had such a small space. So, uh, that time we were already at, uh, uh, at TTDI. Okay. Uh, and we, we actually started renting all the whatever shop that is available at the time because we had no space. Because we want to adhere to the social distancing rule. Correct, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. Mm. But so, end of the day, it's like, you know, whatever said and done, yeah, tough time and all that, but it's, in a way, it's quite a good problem to have right? rather than no business at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> it, is, it is a, a yeah. blessing, I would say. I must yeah. really be very thankful, Correct. you know, that uh, we even have the opportunity to do this and to not, at that time also, to, to serve people. When I say serve people, it's not just the customers, you know. We... We had, uh, we noticed that because we're doing the deliveries, we noticed that a lot more people, uh, actually jump into doing, uh, the gig economy and trying to do deliveries. Some yeah. industry were complete shut down yep. and they actually had to, you know, uh, drive, uh, and do deliveries and whatnot. And we were one of those that were able to operate and, and still continue yeah. to give people jobs. 
So it was in a blessing for, for many of many of us, I would say. Yeah. So talking about defining moment again, right? It's actually where <laughs> cannot cheat, Lavini. What is yeah. this? <laughs> uh, go on, go on. Okay, go on, go on. Three times this year, defining yeah. moments. Three defining moments. <laughs> yeah, it's where that you know, uh, during the pandemic is also where I realized that what we are doing is really um impactful, right? It's really, really impactful. Uh, why? Because during the uh, lockdown period at time, um, that's where I realized that actually what our product and services actually bring people together despite, you know, the situation of people cannot be together, right? So we receive a lot of, uh, feedbacks, you know, um, uh, of, uh, of our customers being really grateful to the product and services because they say that, I miss my girlfriend, I miss my mother, I miss my sister, siblings so much and all that. I, I cannot be there for them. But it is actually through Bloom This and what you helped me to deliver, actually send my regards and send my support to my family member who is far away from me. Yeah, the connection, right? Yeah, yeah which is kind of uh, interesting, right? How... Uh, you're touching life during pandemic with your particular services. It is quite the, it is really connecting people. Mm -hmm. You right. know what? I think, I think that's amazing. There was supposed to be another question. I want to end it at this because okay. ending it with creating, yeah. and plus Penny cheated, right? So <laughs> you can answer questions in the previous segment of this segment. So I blame, I blame Penny, right? We will, we will sambong a very interesting part moving okay. from the pandemic, which is e-commerce to then the physical retail boom, right, right, which right. is today, right? Right. That's, that's quite an interesting topic. And I, I don't think we want to end that yeah, with that. Let's start that on the, next segment but yeah i mean um you know when i was asking about the toughest question and um toughest decision sorry and what we're doing during the pandemic and now end of the day we see that how um flowers actually connect people and 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 i, and I think yeah, for, uh, I, I still remember when you was uh, when you started talking earlier that you know um, end of the day the passion was about uh occasions and uh, connecting people right mm -hmm. so this was really a testament to your industry and how you've been trying to touch uh, the emotions of people, right? Cool. So we'll see you all in the last segment yeah. where we're going to have also, as usual, the quick fire questions where I hope these guys don't cheat again. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> One answer. Okay? Yeah, yeah. One word. <laughs> anyway, right. We'll, we're going to go for a break and we'll catch up you guys after this. See you guys. Cheers. Uh, doing this gives me a lot of meaning because it's like taking a legacy of what my mother started. She really wanted to help the family and uh, she did it with something very humble and simple. Taking it to uh, really expand on it, creating an impact in the industry itself, creating a brand, giving customer a better experience, is very meaningful. Today, Bloom This is no longer just the two of us. Mm. Today, Bloom This is, is for everyone, right? It's for the people who actually believed in the vision and uh, work hard every day to make the vision come true. I don't put failure as a as the end. It's not the end. It's just a setback. It's just like a moment in time that it didn't work out.